Yo, what is poppin' people? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Out of Order, and uh, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial, guys. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do shakes in your edit. So, uh, yeah, I got a basic clip right here. It's just, um, let me just play it out. I already did pan crop on it, but I'll probably do pan crop in another tutorial. But, uh, I'll explain more about the pan crop later in the video. But, uh, yeah, guys, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do shakes in your edit like you saw in the preview. So, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So usually you want to do shakes after you do the velocity and pan crop on your edit. So I already did the velocity and I already did the pan crop, but I'm going to show you briefly how I did the pan crop. So uh, if we look at these keyframes here, you'll see uh, I basically start the scale at 100 and then I go to 33. That's usually the number I most commonly use. I'll either do 122, 133, and then like if it's a big impact, I'll do 144. But uh, you typically want your pan crop to be, you know, you want it to be different and uh, you want it to be kind of steep like this because if it's like if it's too smooth like this it's gonna look very bouncy and you don't want your pan crop to look bouncy at all so yeah you want it to look kind of you want it to be kind of strong all right you want the pan crop to be uh you want it to be very sharp so as you can see the pan crop's pretty sharp i personally like it a lot better like this every editor is different some editors do prefer it a little bit smoother but uh for me personally i like it sharp so i'm gonna make my pan crop like this and uh, let's get on to the actual shakes now. So I'm assuming you guys already have S shake. If you don't already, it's part of Sapphire on um, Boris Sapphire. So yeah, you want to make sure you get that. And uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to add the shake. So I just created a basic adjustment layer here. And then we're just going to search up S shake. Now by default, it'll look pretty terrible. And another thing I've always noticed is this is a common beginner mistake. A very common beginner mistake is that people will just have a very subtle S shake throughout their entire edit. So like, they'll just have like, you know, they'll change the values a little bit. And then they'll just have their shake throughout the entire edit. You don't really wanna do that at all. What you wanna do is you wanna put the shakes only on like the impacts or like where it needs shake, all right? You don't want shake just throughout the whole edit. You want it to be like, like spread evenly on like the shots and stuff, you know? So I reset everything back to the default values and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe the amplitude. So um, typically the amplitude is the one you wanna mess the most with when it, um, when it comes to keyframing. So what I like to do is I like to make the, the shake start at zero for like about three or four frames ahead of time and then have it go up a little bit. So you can make the shake one to two to three. I think three is a little bit strong, but like, you know, sometimes there's, there's some super strong impact you need in your edits so like if you're editing to a song like you know it's just got super strong impact then you're gonna want to increase that a lot more but um for now we're just gonna do a basic shake so i'm just gonna make it one and what i like to do is go four frames ahead make it zero then make the shake have a have a keyframe there and then go in more frames ahead of time and then um then make it back to zero so once you do that and then you can just select all your keyframes press f9 and then we're gonna go into the graph editor now. Now with the graph editor, you want your shakes to look something like this almost, some something like this maybe. So a little bit like that. And then you can also drag this out too. And you're gonna wanna play around with this a lot. So if you, you know, you just wanna make sure, cause sometimes you might want it to be like super, super, you know, minimum. Some people like their shakes like this, while other times you might wanna have it, you know, like this maybe to be a little bit more noticeable for like the bigger impacts and stuff. So you wanna mess around with this part a lot. Next up we're gonna do is go to frequency. Now the frequency, um, I typically go from one to three as well, but uh, on this one I'm gonna do 2.25 because that's usually what I always do. So we're gonna make it 2.25. Now some people also don't like fast shakes and other people are like, you know, oh, you gotta do slow shakes, but like it all depends on your edit. So as you can see, this is super subtle, which is kind of nice. You don't really want your shakes to be too noticeable to like where you can see it like, you know, shaking a bunch. But uh, for now, I think this looks pretty good. Next thing you wanna do is enable motion blur. You can still have RSMB when you're rendering the final product, but uh, for now, um, I like to just keep motion blur on either way. And then motion blur strength you can mess with too. I mean, that all just depends on your preference. Some people, you know, don't like motion blur that much. I'm, I usually keep it at the default. 
now here's the next important thing when it comes to shakes now for shakes you want every single shake to have a different seed all right every shake you do make sure you change the seed or something because if you don't change the seed of the shakes your all your shakes are gonna look the same so every single shake you make make sure it has a different seed that's what i always do now wrap x and wrap y you, you can just like do whatever we're gonna use motion tile which i'll show you later on but uh, we can just skip through that now for x shake this one's gonna vary on your edit sometimes you want your shakes to look different so if you want like only it to shake on the y part like this and then we can let me increase the shake so it's more noticeable because this is too subtle for this so like this for example if you only want it to shake on the y part then make sure to disable this but i usually if i do do that i still keep it like at a very small amount like 22 just so it's there a little bit but uh that's just if you want it to only shake a certain way you know and then same goes for y you know if you want it to shake only on the x the x area which you know i feel like x shakes are a little bit weirder than y shakes i don't know why but that's just me so yeah you can mess with these values too some people mess with the amplitude the frequency and the phase and stuff i i never really touch those because i feel like that's just too much you know you don't need to go into that detail for a shake unless you like need it to be perfect now z shake is kind of complicated now z shake you you can use z shake but i know a lot of people don't like z shake um personally i think z shake is kind of useless if you already got good pan crop but it's basically just like it's basically like like if my like if my hands a video it's basically like moving forward you know y shake would be this x shake would be this and then pan sh the z shake would be that so i i feel like it's kind of unnecessary when you got pan crop but i mean if you do want it if you want to add a little bit of like some extra stuff to your shakes you can mess with those settings now this is probably the most important part of the shake you always want tilt enabled at least somewhat you know you want a little bit of tilt whether it's super minimum like five all the way to like 22 you know you always want some tilt shake on because tilt shake just makes it look so much more better because i feel like a lot of beginners will just not use tilt shake at all and it'll just look super basic so you definitely want tilt shake i usually use 8 to 12 that's usually like my values that i go for now this part right here channels is, if, is for if you want to do like glitchy shakes so like you know we can mess with these values right here and if you want your shake to look glitchy like have some rgb splitting you can mess with these values too um i don't really use these shakes that often when i do um glitch edits well well you know i don't really make glitch edits in the first place but uh when i do do glitch edits i will um mess with these values sometimes on certain shakes but you don't want to do this for every shake throughout the edit because it'll get really repetitive and that's everything you need to know about s shake this is how i personally do my s shakes i always mess with them the values and stuff also don't keyframe anything else i mean you can keyframe but sometimes it'll stutter and glitch out if you keyframe anything else other than the amplitude it really depends on what you're keyframing here um but yeah um the last thing i want to mention before i end the video is you might notice when you combine s shake with a bunch of other effects like let's say twitch for example you'll notice that um your 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 um your footage will clip it'll have like some clipping at the edges um to fix that you want to add motion tile on the clip so i already added motion tile right here as you can see motion tiles on the clip and then make sure mirror edges is on now output width and output height i usually make it like 122 or like 130 but you can go higher if you want just remember it will increase the render time for me at least it does increase the render time so that's why i do 122 but uh if you don't really care about render time you can increase it a bunch but you might get some bugs later on but yeah that's everything you need to know about s shit guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video drop a like if you enjoy subscribe if you're new and you want to stick around um I make tutorials about After Effects and other plugins and stuff almost every week now. So, yeah, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Peace. Have a good one. I'm not